All right. Hey, everybody. Um, this is a game between myself, um, Postal, and RVD. Um, for those who aren't familiar with RVD, he is the, uh, uh, at the time that I was playing, um, primarily back in, uh, from 2006, um, well, really, no, I, I played all the way up until around 2000, um, 2010 is kind of when I, uh, I stopped. Um, RVD was the best player in the world, uh, and what he really stood out um, for, what he was really known for, is, is as Abe described as uh, Irish speed clickiness, and that he had the ability to do more than anybody else in the game simply because he was very good at, uh, at clicking. He had an excellent knowledge of the game, and he was very fast in what he did, and we're going to be able to showcase some of that. And I, uh, for the record, I, especially if RVD is listening to this, I, am, I was never better than him. Uh, there was not a, a time when I was better than him, but there were certain things that I could do better than him. And one of the things that I had better than him was patience. Um, and what that meant was, is if I could drag a game to the point where he got frustrated and annoyed with it, um, I could pull out a win. Um, and so uh, this is a particular game. This is between uh, myself and RVD on Coast to, uh, Coast to Coast, which is a tiny little map. And so you can kind of see here we got it, um, got it paused. I've got this all set up. This is the dot sonar command right there from uh, from the recorder, which allows you to see under the water. Um, and you can see, of course, we are sponsored by the Swedish Yank Spankers. Um, shout out to those boys. It's been a uh, it's been a long time since I've seen anybody from the Swedish Yank Spankers. Um, and uh, oh yeah, so yeah, so this is a very small uh, small map. You can see there's limited resources, limited uh, metal extractors. Um, and, and everything. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get this going here and um, we'll go ahead and crank this up so you can kind of see what's going on. Now, what we do is we both start um, building wind followed by metal. I build a little bit more wind because I know that wind is not at all reliable on this map. Um, and so they generally swing anywhere from zero all the way up to yeah, plus 17 or so. It does make it more efficient officially, but without a large energy reserves, um, it makes it tough to do it. So now you can see here that we have the two opposite ways of starting this map. I start out by building vehicle, and RVD starts by building air. Uh, air first is a relatively common strategy. C first is common, and vehicle first is common. That's what makes one of this maps, uh, one of this map, uh, this map one of the more interesting maps. Um, you can see here I comment, wind is so terrible here at times. And RVD says, I get a lot of plus zeros, indicating that the wind doesn't produce anything. So you can see right here, this is RVD going into the water and building sonars, and he is turning them off. And that's going to give him metal. I mean, sorry, it's going to give him uh, plus energy, plus seven, I believe, if I'm going by, uh, going by memory. I am pretty sure and pretty confident at this point that RVD is planning to go air first, because that's a very common thing for him to do. As a result, the first thing I did once I got my construction vehicle out was build some missile towers for some air defense. I want that first bomber to come in, destroy nothing, fail completely, and uh, and that means I'm going to be ahead. Um, I'm going to win on the exchange. You can also see that I'm reclaiming trees. Rather than walking into the water and building sonars, which get consistent energy, I'm reclaiming trees instead. Everybody has returned, and now he's guarding out this first bomber. Now, typically in a lot of good high energy maps, a first bomber can come out just a little bit after two minutes. You can see right now, according to this game clock, we're not even at three yet. So this is a very slow first bomber from uh, from RBD on this map. Um, but eventually it's going to get done. And this first bombing run is incredibly crucial for anybody uh, who's looking to go air first. This is where you really want this to be devastating. You want them to stall by the time you're done. Um, so he go ahead and he goes ahead and he pulls it out. He's going to go in. The first thing he does, he sends it right over. He knows where the metal extractor is already. See what I'm doing? I'm actually reclaiming my vehicle plant. I don't intend to keep it. Now you can see my metal extractors didn't get destroyed, and that's because only a single bomb hit them. So you can see their health right down there in the bottom left of the bottom left. He says, I fucked up so bad because he didn't actually destroy anything with that run. A little bit has to do with the elevation of the map, but for the most part, there you go. So now he's finding the elevation. He's got it set. He also knows that I've got a bunch of air defense, so you notice he only swings to take out the 
single metal extractor right there before he goes and flies that bomber back. He needs that bomber to stay alive. Uh, if he loses it, then I get to f build freely, because you can see his second bomber is not even out yet. He's using his commander to expand. He doesn't have any other construction resources. I've got two con vehicles and my commander. He knows it too, so he knows at this point I can outbuild him. So if he doesn't out-destroy what I'm building, then I'm going to get ahead of him pretty quickly. He's repairing that bomber because he wants to go and send it back on some additional runs. I've switched to K-Bots. K-Bots, you might be asking, why on earth would you be building K-Bots on Shore to Shore? This is something that I actually um, developed on my own uh, for, from a strategy standpoint. K-Bots act as a resource. They produce metal, and they produce... So that was a scout that I just tried. I'll, I'll comment to that. See why he's asking, huh? How did that first one die? Because he had actually done something really complicated where he sent a bomber up top, but it wasn't quite off screen. So you can see he's very upset that his bomber got destroyed. I'm very happy that I got that bomber. I, uh, I had radar targeted it as it came onto the screen, is my, uh, I believe what happened. You can see here he's gone C. Um, and what this is right here is he's planning on raiding my shores, and that's why he's building Skeeters to, to begin with. So you can see here, I had it targeted via radar. And that's where I'm talking about how I got that bomber before it even came. So we start to fly it off screen, but my missiles pegged it. And it only takes a handful of missiles to bring down the bomber. So I say, I said, via radar, it got hit before it came in. So this is me explaining to RV how we failed, which makes him more mad. Well, never in five years could my MTs do that. Well, I'm sorry, RVD. Mine could. Your MTs are arm, I say. Mine, of course, are core, because I only play core. He says same thing. And I've been core a few games, you know. Of course he has, but I say I know. Now for those who are somewhat newer to, um, I, mean, I said I felt like that was the appropriate thing to say, is what I say there. So for those of you who, are, who might be newer to the game, might be wondering why we're building wind around our metal extractors. This is essentially protection. So when the bomber comes in, the wind dies, but the metal extractor stays alive. Um, on maps where metal is rare, it's more important to have um, protection for your metal and keep them alive longer. Um, so I was going back to why I built KBOT here. These actually produce resources. I'm going to go from memory here. I suppose I could look it up, but uh, 0.3 metal and plus 7 or 8 energy. Um, and what that means is these, in and of themselves, are more efficient than a solar and metal, extra, metal maker combo. So you see I have a metal maker here, so that way I don't excess my energy. I don't want to waste it. Um, so if I start coming up to where I'm having a really high energy level, I'm going to flip this on, and I toggle these on and off. He's coming in for a raid, and I actually pick it up in radar. So you can see how these, these missile towers are tracking this as it comes in. So before it even gets close, it starts getting hit. He recognizes it. He pulls it back because he wanted to tag this metal extractor right here in the corner. So, but he also knows that I've now switched my missile towers to be targeting his ship, which actually gives him a chance to bomb again. But it looks like his bombers are down, so I said the wrong thing. Um, now I'm not building. I'm building these defenses here as shore defenses for my commander, which is going to go into the water. Now I am playing the long game here. I have these cavots building this energy. Now typically idle cons are bad. You don't want these construction, uh, you want to be using all the construction power that you have. But I don't have the resources to be using it, especially since these are the resources themselves. So the missile towers, even while they're targeting something else, will target something that uh, will take targets of opportunity as they come in. So I'm building C. I do know that in the long term, I'm not really planning on holding it, but I do know that I have to contest the C. I simply can't just um, hold out. Can't just hold out without uh, having some additional sight for my missile towers. The other thing that I know that RVD also knows is that these Crusaders are the uh, the way to dominate the sea. And I actually do a little bit of raid of my raiding myself, take out a win, but that was a, a loss for me. He's going to be able to recover that wreck easily, and. Uh, and I didn't take out the metal extractor. Uh, I also know that he, at this point that he has superiority on me. Um, and so he can quickly goes out there and snatches that. I know that he has more than me. I'm not going to be able to beat him in that. 
So this Crusader has the exact same range as these missile towers do. So I know that as long as I stay close to the shore, when he comes in for this raid with the Crusaders, I'm going to be able to contest and not lose my C to this Crusader as it comes in for the fight. And all this while, I'm building more K-Bots. You can see how I've turned on these, these Metal Makers right here. You can see I've produced 6,000 Metal to his 5,000. And I've produced 103,000 energy to his 88. So I'm out producing him at this point. But he's got more hardware to take me down. So he starts coming in using his sonar that he built right here. to start shooting and try and taking down my guys. I see it's a little exposed. I go for a quick run on it. But I know I can't contest it at this point. So I just pull them up north under the protection of my missile towers. I'm being a little cheeky here. I figure I want to try and get some additional range out on here. I bring a K-Bot down to build it. He comes in. He's now marked my facility. And he's thinking he can try and take that out. Again, this is too exposed for him. He's getting hit by my missile towers. And I bring out these guys. And I'm trying to take out that con and stop it from repairing it, which I succeeded. So that was a good, good thing for me. So, again, that Crusader is not quite low enough health, but he starts screening it with his own Skeeters, um, and my searchers, they're not, they're not gonna be able to get out. So, at this point I'm struggling for resource, um, and I just start guarding and, pr and protecting this. He wants to contest, he wants to push me out of the sea fully, so he knows he needs to take these, but my commander pops up, does some nice degunning, pushes him back. You can see how he's targeting the corner here with this depth charge. What he's trying to do is to get that to land on there, and then there you go. So now he's got it, so he's shooting that corner and damaging it. So you can see how I'm repairing it, though, with my commander, which is a very powerful builder. Um, I know that if I can push him back with these missile towers, then I can win this wreckage. That would be pretty big for me. So I keep contesting with the missile towers. Meanwhile. RV, you can see how he's building these sonars right here and turning them off. Um, this is where, and you can see he's got these metal makers to take care of his excess energy that he's accessing. But he stops building the metal makers and the sonars and comes out and instead starts to reclaim and repair his crusader. So, but you can see he's lost his Skeeter screening force and my commander is repairing faster than he's destroying it. Again, all the while, I'm building more K-Bots. And what he's doing is really considered the standard coast-to-coast -coast strategy. You eventually take over with Crusaders, uh, or Enforcers, in the, middle of the, uh, in the middle of the water. He moves this one a little far north, and I'm able to hit it with about four or five at the same time. See how quickly its health is dropping? It's not a fight that he can win. He's now shooting my commander, but he's also come in range of my missile towers. And then he drops it, and he says, that's not fair at all. He tries to contest. He wants that wreck. I want that wreck. That's 718 metal we're looking at right there. That's a really big deal in a game in a game like this. I win, I win the exchange because the commander reclaims faster, and then I also get his construction vehicle. It's a really big win for me because at this point, not only did I win the fight and take out that crusader, he says, why do crusaders magically just move? That's because he was trying to force fire it. He was trying to force fire it, and it may have been a maneuver. He says the unit didn't move anywhere. No, that's total bullshit. He's griping about his units again. Because whenever he would make a mistake, it was always the unit's fault. He says, I think it's because their depth they think their depth charge is their primary weapon. He says, no, which is actually true. He says it's just bullshit. Don't know exactly the reason why that happens, um, but he needed to be aware of that and pull it back. Instead, he lost it. He loses the con. And then I come out ahead. You can see now the metal here. I'm It's 12,000 to 9,000. I am out producing in big time, and I also just won this pretty big wreck field. Um, so that's a really big win for me. I get my air up and running, and this is where I'm going to start to go on the offensive here and start uh, putting a little heat on him. <clears throat> so he knows he generally has sea superiority, but he can't claim this wreck field, which is really the big prize um, out of that whole exchange. 
Um, but he's building air cons, which in and of themselves are actually resource producers. Um, they produce more energy but less metal than K-Bot cons. Um, and he goes back to building his own sonar, knowing that I am, I'm not really being aggressive at this point. Although I switch and I build, an, I just decided it's time for me to start putting out an enforcer and seeing if I can actually contest. Again, my long-term strategy is I, if I lose the water, it's okay. That's the way I'm thinking. Um, his long-term strategy, he's planning on win the water. And you can see he's doing that here. He's planning on coming with the sub and pushing me out. Because the missile towers, he knows, can't shoot that sub. So this is a single bomber. And I'll slow things down here because there's a lot going on. I'm bombing, trying to take out his metal. Not a very successful run. He's also attacking with his sub. I get two crusader, two enforcers out. And I'm, oh, I think I lose this one. No, nope. okay, so I bring up my con, my com to, uh, to repair that. His sub is really close to being dead. He drops an enforcer to the missile towers, immediately sends out. Notice how when you're playing TA at a really high level, it's really important to take control of wreck fields. So I'm trying to get that guy because I knew how close he was to dead. Um, but in the end, doesn't work out. I also, just for record, I love the sound on the Enforcer's uh, shots. It's, it's, a, it's a great unit sound. That Anyway, okay, that probably doesn't sound good through the mic, but um, it's a great sound. Um, so yeah, so I maintain control of the wreck field. I've got some Enforcers. I actually managed to stay in the sea. Now, if he had won that with the sub, he would have been able to come in, and he would have been able to clean up some of those wrecks, potentially. Um now, at this point, you might be wondering, why on earth am I putting all my bombers together? This right here is something that I discovered. It's called the, uh, I call it the core bomber stack. What happens is, is you can get multiple bombers all in the exact same spot, and then that way when they drop their payload, it delivers as many bombs as you have bombers to a single location. It allows you to maneuver, just like you're doing line bombing uh, and multi-target bombing, bombing um, yet have the power of a massive amount of bombers. It's incredibly useful um, and, and and very destructive. You can sling bombs and take out a commander, fusions, high tar high priority targets very very easily. And they're also the bombers die one at a time. See that right there? That's me flying a bomber off screen with my intention of coming around from the backside and nailing these resources. So there you go. That was a decent run. For a single bomber, that was a decent run. Here he goes. He sees my commander walking up, so he goes to harass. He's got three enforcers now to his three crusaders. I'm using radar targeting to keep him pushed back. His commander's guarding out another crusader. So he wants to, again, he wants to contest the water in the standard strategy. I'm building advanced KVOTs. Um, the reason here is I'm planning on using voyeurs for energy. He decides he's going to switch. He wants to raid bomb me back. He knows he's got to go to the air, considering the fact that, if you can see, all of this hardware and resource production compared to what he's got on his side. Not very much at all. Again, RVD was very much unit control focused. He was very good at making sure um, his units worked the way he wanted them to. Come on. I want to take out that sonar. That's going to give me a bit of an advantage. Now, the other thing is, I'm building an advanced K-Botcon. This gives me advanced to the access to the advanced trees, so I'm going to be able to have advanced radar and advanced constructions as well. <clears throat> Again, looking at resources, you see that I'm at 21,000 to his 16,000. Even though I'm significant, I'm very, very far ahead of him, he's still very dangerous. So I just bombed from off screen. As I'm bombing, I'm marking things. I'm marking missile towers, I'm marking the shipyards, I'm marking the sonars, I'm marking different resources. Um, you can see how he puts up additional winds to nanoblock as I come in and bomb him. Bombing is very useful, but the one thing it consumes is time. It takes a lot of time to, uh, to be able to bomb like that. Um, and so it takes your focus away from building. You can see here, right here, I am building an intimidator. Um, this is the core Big Bertha equivalent. My intent here is to, of course, shell him into oblivion, trusting that I can be able to, that I'm going to be able to protect it. Um, so I bring some of my additional build power in. Now watch what happens here. You can see I've got this Moho Metal Maker. 
This is more efficient than regular metal makers um, as far as an energy to metal ratio. So the issue is, you can see how I turn it off. I turn off, I'm uh, sorry, flipping these on and off. The issue with it is that it consumes more, uh, more energy. And so it's really easy to stall on energy if you just flip it on. So I've got it started knowing that once my energy point gets to a certain level, I'm going to spark it. That means I'm going to take a missile tower and I'm going to shoot it and cause it to turn itself on before it's actually finished. Um, and that's going to really boost my metal production because I get the efficiency that otherwise wouldn't come from this. Now I have these... Let's see here. I have my metal makers turned off. This is this thing. is We actually don't have this set up right now so I can see my energy production to see... So now, on that bombing run, he says F that because he failed to destroy the advance, the uh, aircraft plant here, which was, his, which was his target. But he also marked this. So he knows this is here now. And so, me, realizing that it's dead, because it just exists, I switch and start building a new one. He knows that there's an intimidator coming, so he's really focused on bombers now. So you can see he's putting out bombers with his commander and all of his construction air. The other thing he's doing, you'll notice, is he's building an advanced shipyard. He knows that he can actually challenge my shores if he's able to get an advanced crusader area um, cruiser out. And that means he's going to have longer range and he can actually shell out my missile towers and push me out of the sea. He's sticking with his original plan of winning the sea. I also scouted them, though, so I know that it exists. And what I do is I mark the four corners, because when you're attacking them, that's what you need to hit if you're not using a sub or something along that line. So knowing that there's advanced sea out there is really important, because I know that this can be easily used to produce large amounts of resources in the form of carriers. Um, and here I go on a little, uh, a little raiding run, testing the waters. He comes down to guard. I don't want to give him a ton of metal, so I fall back. But you can see, here comes the stack. Now, this is several bombers. I also am distracting his air defense with my ships. That's part of me going in. Notice how it vaporizes instantly. And I still go on, and it's just continued to bomb. Dropping massive amounts of bombs. I didn't quite get that. But you can see how it vaporized. I didn't even leave him a wreck. That's a huge loss for him. Um, and that was my primary target. So that was a good run for me. And now I'm going to be rebuilding that stack again. Intimidator is mostly is getting pretty close to being done at this point. I know once that Intimidator is up, I just need to protect it, and I can push him out of the sea eventually. RVD is smart, though, so he scouts it, and he finds that nearly finished Intimidator. So, again, he's getting ready. He knows he's got enough bombers to take it out. He starts shelling, he wants to bring back those. You can hear that sound, that's him dropping his bombers off screen. Right as that intimidator gets done, you see me trying to move my units around, I'm trying to get wind around it. And that is a brilliant run by RVD. You notice how he swung in from the back corner of it, it's incredibly difficult to pull off. He leaves me with 2,000 medals worth of wreckage. And I say, that's what I get for building it in traffic. I wasn't able to get my wind around it. But I'm starting to build another. I've got my moho working. So that's really producing a ton of metal for me compared to the resources that he has. You can see he really hasn't expanded his resources all that much. So again, this is a, a game of, of patience where he's really focusing on trying to win, take out high priority targets. Also have these voyeurs. These produce energy. So, and they build very quickly. So I'm building them and I turn them off. They're mobile, they're hard to destroy and hard to bomb. I just get them out of the way and I let them sit there and produce a consistent amount of energy for me. He takes out my air facility once again. I have all these here as a deterrent now. I know that a win for me is going to come from what I build on my shore. But I also know that he's pressing in and he outnumbers me in Crusaders and he's eventually going to be able to drive me back. So I start building a Punisher. He continues focused on his strategy. He's building scouts. You notice how he built a second sea lab, so that way he can actually use the crusader strategy to push me out. Because he knows as soon as he gets an advanced lab up from the sea, I'm going to bomb it. So there you go. You can see how he comes in. He scouts. He sees them all, and then he shift clicks all the missile turrets, and that really helps him push in on my shores. 
I still have my four enforcers, but he's got more, and he's driving back even more. And he's winning this wreck field. You can see how he's got his air coming in and he's reclaiming it. He scouts, he marks it, he realizes... See there, he realizes this is going to hold him back. That um, Punisher right there is my shore defense. It has longer range than the Crusaders, and it's going to stop him from pressing in at this point. Because it's tough for him to manage both the Punisher and the Crusader. You hear some bombs going off. He's ready to come in. He's got another bombing run. He wants to take out my air facility because he wants that those bomber stacks to stop. But he chose an angle where my winds were, and that's the nice thing about having additional K-Bots is I can always set up to nanoblock. Nanoblocking is when you build winds or structures in front of your uh, high-value targets. But he also took out my Moho. And that's good for him because that's going to slow my energy, uh, my metal production, and it causes... Uh, me to stall in the meantime. So you notice when the Moho got taken out, I flipped on all my regular metal makers at the same time. He sees this Timmy, he's going to mark it, but you can see I only have one K-Bot building it at this point. It's because I'm not really focused on getting it done. It's not a big deal for me. I, I want him to keep him busy with things to bomb. Here you go, I take out another Crusader. My Punisher continues to hammer away at his Crusaders. I played a little riskier. I really want that medal, so I send my commander out to go get it. But he doesn't decide to capitalize. He knows that if he comes in to try and take out the commander with his crusaders, he's going to end up in really big trouble. He's building more bombers because he knows he's dealing with intimidators. At this point, he knows I'm not producing them big time because I'm able to afford multiple intimidators, multiple facilities, and uh, continue producing things. Including the fact that I got a Punisher up and going. You can see how the Punisher has the added effect of actually helping, giving me more space and allowing me to kind of control this wreck field that previously he was in control of. It's much metal for me. This, again, that's 700 metal. He's letting me get away with murder here. Uncontested, my commander comes up and snags that. That's a really big deal for me. Now my Intimidator, which I kind of started on a lark, actually looks like it might get done. See how I'm starting other Intimidators? These are just things to keep him busy. See how this, even though it's not done, how it's on, that was the result of me sparking it. He's got lots of bombers ready, so he's going to go in and he's going to find that Intimidator. He sees it. He's got it marked. And you can see right here, there goes the bombers. He's going to go and he's going to take it out. I anticipate it, so I get the nanoblock set up. He now goes where the nanoblock is coming from. It was so brilliant about that, and this is what makes RVD really good. You notice how his scouts came in right at the time his bombers came in? He had that time so that the missile defense came in, targeted the scouts, and became, the bombers became the secondary target as they came in. I wasn't able to stop it, and it was a really well-executed bombing run. Speaking of bombing runs, I screwed that one up. I got a metal extractor, and I did get a Seacon accidentally out of that one. And that was the, uh, the bomber stack. And he's coming in with the sub. He wants to contest that wreck field and push my commander out because he notices these little vapor dots appearing. And so he knows that my commander is busy doing that. He builds a K-Bot because what he's planning on doing is building pelicans. Pelicans are arm vermin tactic that can be used to um, easily defeat searchers and skeeters. Uh, because the missiles from the searchers and skeeters, which is actually their best weapon, um, can't hit the pelicans. So he's intending on using those. And I say, blah, I have to go to class. This is actually back when I was in college. And uh, I had to... Uh, I hoped this game would be over in about 40 minutes, but at this point, I mentioned that I gotta go. And uh, we decide, I decide just to keep playing. Um, I said, screw it. This is our, I believe this is one, part of our best of 10. And that was a, uh, a single bomber run. So the nice thing about stacks is you can pull I ask him how much metal he's making. He says 19.6. And 
and I told him I should have just gone C because I realized that, oh, he's making 92.6 metal. I think at this point I'm at, yeah, I'm at 36.5, more than doubling his metal production. So that's why I'm able to crank out these intimidators that fa almost faster than he can build the bombers to destroy them. Punisher, and I'm using the radar targeting to keep myself safe. So yeah, I'm very far ahead of him in resource production at this point. I kept building searchers. That probably wasn't the best idea. I probably needed to switch to enforcers at this point. But that was more of just a a, a function of me uh, idly doing that while I was focusing on managing my um, excellent, otherwise excellent economy. See here, he's building up his air. This K-Bot, advanced K-Bot facility is taking a while because he's focusing on getting that done. And there comes the first shot for my Intimidator. First thing, of course, get a shot off. What he's going to do to it? He's going to bomb it. So now I'm anticipating the bombing run. I got my winds up around it. I have a K-Bot selected. He bombs. He bombs the wrong one. He forgot which one was which, which is part of the reason why I started a bunch of them. So now my Intimidator is firing away, and he doesn't have the bombers to destroy it. I'm going to get a few minutes of free reign. Send out my searchers to screen, give my missile towers a shot. And he says he can't win with all that M. He basically recognizing that I'm just out producing him, producing Intimidators faster than he can destroy them. He starts going in for an all-out attack, he drops an Enforcer, it gets really sloppy. I mean, sorry, yeah, he drops a, a Crusader, sorry. Um, I keep my Enforcers back. He's trying to press in, destroy my searchers, and take out the sea. But my Intimidator is just firing away. He says, good game. And he self-destructs. And so that's one of those games that's really um, what I think kind of epitomizes what's so great about Total Annihilation. And that even if you're really, really good at controlling units and, and, and micro-ability, if you have the... the the patience and the right kind of strategy. Total Annihilation as a game allowed you to play the macro game where he was outdoing me in his, his bombing runs um, and his uh, just general uh, unit control ability. He was beating me at sea. But the fact that I was playing the long game and I was planning on just producing more and more and more and more, eventually I got a, a, a tim an Intimidator up, multiple Intimidator building at the same time to confuse his marking as he was scouting. Um, and then eventually... Uh, win the game and so he he was you know unless he managed to snap off a lucky shot at the commander at that point um which i wasn't going to let him do um that was going to be a victory for me because eventually my intimidator would take out everything he had on shore so that is the uh that's the game that is postal versus rvd on coast to coast um two separate approaches to the game two separate strategies um I know the uh, the TADRS, the, the Tatters review that Abe actually did on this game, he said that this is kind of like watching uh, uh, Nug 315 versus Preen back in the day. Um, I'll have to take his word for it because uh, those guys were before my time. But Nug 315 was always a really good builder, kind of patient. Uh, and Preen was kind of like RVD in that he was really good at making his units be really, really effective by giving uh, a lot more of his time to them. So um, perhaps RVD is a good game. And uh, uh, we'll have uh, we'll have more. Thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye bye.